Hello and welcome back. In the last two videos, we went through how to transfer the loads from the source of originating to the center of the weld, and later we went through the calculation of properties of a weld. Now, before we go through the methods given in Eurocode 1993-18, how to dimension the weld or how to check a weld for given loads. It's better if we review how to calculate the stresses in critical points of a weld. In this video, I will focus on calculation the stresses, uh, normal and shear stresses in the critical points of a weld. As we learned for a given weld pattern, we have a kind of line weld with X and Y main axis. And also we might have six different actions, three forces and three moments. Let's assume this is zeta direction. And then we have force in X direction, Fx, force in Y direction, Fy, force in zeta direction, bending moment about x bending moment about y and also bending moment about z which is called torsion so these are six actions that can happen in the centroid of a weld for each one we have uh, a specific stress calculation for example for planar forces fx and Fy are planar forces. As a result, they can produce shear stresses. The force perpendicular to the weld surface is making tension or compression. So Fz can make tension or compression. As a result, this is a, an axial action. Consequently, this is making normal stress, shown by sigma. Now, if we look at Mx and My, they are bending moments about the planar axis. Mx and My are bending moments about or around planar axis. So as far as they are bending moment they will make a flexural or bending stresses and they are perpendicular to the surface of the weld as a result they are also making normal stress sigma and finally the torsion is moment about perpendicular axis this is making again shear stress and this is also shown with top so here we can see that three actions mx my and fz are making normal stresses and forces fx and fy and also torsion are making shear stresses for normal stresses they are either in compressor or in tension as a result they are just in one direction always in zeta direction but shear stresses can be in the direction of x or in the other direction as y as a result we can have a tau x and tau y and also we have sigma which is always in the zeta direction coming back to the strength of material courses uh, sigma for the normal force i can write that this is in zeta direction is force in the zeta direction fz divided by area of the weld this is for the force in zeta direction also if it is under bending moment again it is normal stress and it can be calculated based on m about x times y of the 
certain point that you are looking for calculation divided by moment of inertia about x and sigma again normal stress in zeta direction due to the bending moment about the other axis my can be calculated according to my times xi divided by iy so if we calculate these three then we have sigma in zeta direction it can be positive or negative it is important to understand that uh, the weld is always dimension for the uh, tension when it is in compression it is in the safe side then it comes to the shear stresses for the shear stresses produced by the shear forces it is very straightforward for example tau in x direction due to f in x direction is fx divided by aw and tau in y direction due to shear is fy divided by aw up to here it was very straightforward for normal forces uh, we have three uh, actions force in zeta direction bending moment about x and bending moment about y of which x and y are planar uh, axes for the shear stress uh, in terms of having forces in x and y direction it is still a straightforward and we can calculate according to the force divided by the area of the weld when it comes to the torsion it might be a little bit different as far as this torsion is sometimes uh, not covered enough in the strength of material calculation here i'm going to cover partially not not going through details uh, if we look at the uh, equations given in strength of material courses if you have such a case and then here is the centroid of the section that you are studying and you have the torsion then in every point of the section that you are interested to calculate shear stress the shear stress is always perpendicular to the line which is connecting the point of interest to the centroid of the torsion and tau is always calculated according to tr divided by ip ip is the second polar moment of inertia or polar moment of inertia in short so now we can see that the shear stress is not in horizontal and vertical directions for having those we need to find out the components in x and y direction now let's assume that this angle here is alpha as a result this value is alpha as well and the shear stress in x direction is tau times sinus alpha so tau x is tau times sinus alpha and in y direction tau y it will be tau cosinus alpha i can substitute tau in these two equations so tau x will be t r sinus alpha divided by ip and here t r cosinus alpha divided by ip now if we look at r is this segment length up to the point of interest and this value is r cosinus alpha which is relevant to x of the point if this is x and this is y and also r sinus alpha is representing the vertical distance of the point of interest towards the uh, weld center point so this is y of that point let's write down xi and yi so r sinus alpha is t y divided by ip and this will be t x divided by ip so here we can see that how to calculate the stresses in different directions for torsion now we can check what kind of section we have what kind of torsion we have and then we can jump into the calculation for stresses now let's go through one 
example let's have a simple question right now a simple plate under the vertical force let's say it is 20 kilonewton and we have two line of welds the vertical length 100 millimeter and the distance from the force to this is going to be 80 millimeter again first of all we need to select a proper coordinate I usually use X and Y in the center or in the surface of the weld but you can select another coordinate as you please so first we need to transfer the load to the centroid of the weld as far as the weld is completely symmetrical it will be exactly in the midway of 100 millimeter and the force is out of the plane as a result it can make bending moment about x-axis so we have shear force in y direction f y 20 kilonewton and also we have m about x which is 20 kilonewton times 0 0.08 millimeter or meter which is 1.6 kilonewton meter so first we need to find out the centroid of the weld here it was clear then we need to transfer all the loads to the centroid of the weld we did it now we can calculate the uh, properties of this weld including aw which is 2 times t times 100 millimeter we have two lines of welds 100 millimeter length and t is the thickness for now let's just focus on the calculation according to the thickness as a parameter of t or w or or whatever later on we will come back to the directional method and simplified method and we will learn how to substitute this t or w with other parameters including throat thickness of the weld so this will be 200 t a square millimeter and i need only moment of inertia about x it will be 2 times t times 100 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 16 or 1.67 10 power 5 t millimeter 4 so i have only fy as shear force producing shear stress in y direction and i have mx which can produce normal stress about x uh, which can produce normal stress in zeta direction so i can write down the equations tau because of fy will be 20 kilonewton divided by 200 t newton a square millimeter so it will be 100 divided by t megapascal and then i have sigma because of m about x it is important to understand which part of the weld will be under tension which part will be in compression so here we can see that as far as bending moment is going to be about positive direction of x so it's making tension above x and below x it's going to be under compression so this will be 1.6 10 power by 6 newton millimeter divided by 1.67 10 power by 5 millimeter 4 including t so it will be 1.6 10 power by 6 1.67 times so it will be 9.6 divided by t megapascal so we have sigma in zeta direction 9.6 divided by t and we have shear stress in y direction which is 100 divided by t megapascal now let's have another example 80 millimeter and the height so 160 to be 50 millimeter and 100 millimeter and let's assume that we have some actions here in zeta direction i'm just not going through torsion for this example we will come back to that later let's have the force which is 30 kilonewton 
and also bending moment about x which is let's say 5 kilonewton meter what else and let's have the shear force in y direction positive direction which is 15 kilometer it would be wise if we look at what kind of forces we have and then calculate the properties of the weld according to what we have. We have Fy, so it makes shear stress in y direction. We have to calculate the uh, area of the weld. Also, we have F in zeta direction. It is also making normal stress. It should be divided by weld area we have to calculate weld area and we have mx which is making normal stress in zeta direction and the equation is mx times y divided by moment of inertia about x so as a result we just need to calculate area of the weld and also moment of inertia about x axis so in this case aw will be very straightforward summation of the length times t assuming that the weld thickness is constant so it will be 50 millimeter times 2 plus 100 millimeter times t and then moment of inertia about x two times above and below this uh, x axis we have 50 millimeter that's why we have two zero as far as the t will be powered by 3 as a result we assume it's 0 we went through this in the previous video and then area 50 millimeter times t times the vertical distance between the centroid of the well to the centroid of the segment that is considered 50 millimeter powered by 2 plus t times 100 millimeter power by 3 divided by 12 so it will be 3.33 10 power by 5 times t millimeter 4 so you just need to follow some steps and then calculate the relevant stresses here we can calculate the shear stress in y direction which is fy divided by aw it is 15 kilonewton, 15,000 newton divided by 200 t square millimeter. 15,000 divided by 200, it will be 75 divided by t megapascal. And we have normal stress due to zeta. It's better if always uh, for calculation of the shear stresses, write the direction in the results. It would help uh, later for combined with other shear stresses. Now let's calculate the normal stress due to the force of Fz. It is Fz divided by Aw, 30 kilonewton divided by 200 T, and then it will be 150 divided by T megapascal, and it's tension. And now for Mx still it is sigma but this time the source is the moment about x we know that the equation is my divided by ix so y can be different positions it can be every spots of the weld that you are interested to calculate let's substitute mx and ix to see how it looks like it is 5 kilonewton meter times y divided by ix which is 3.33 10 power by 5 t 5 it will be 15 divided by t times y so here it's a function of y and usually we are interested in the maximum tension that might happen in our weld so here we can see that this mx is making tension on the top level of the weld here this line is going to be under maximum tension just due to bending moment mx and all the spots on this location have the y distance towards x as 50 millimeter so if you are looking for maximum tension 
then y will be 50 millimeter then it will be 750 divided by t megapascal and we can write down its intention we have shear stress in y direction upward and we have stress due to or normal stress due to fz and mx both in tension now i can write down the summary i have tau y which is 75 divided by t megapascal in vertical direction and i have sigma in zeta direction the summation of 150 over t plus 750 over t which in total will be 900 divided by t megapascal and its intention this is how to calculate the uh, critical point when it is under bending moment now let's go through another example if you remember we had this connection plate for runway crane beams typically welded from these locations to simplify it i do not weld the left edge and here we have the column we can assume that the horizontal distance is 100 millimeter the vertical distance 150 millimeter and we have the load somewhere here with the distance of 80 millimeter and let's say the force is 20 kilonewton with the horizontal force of 4 or 5 kilonewton so this is a planar action there is no load perpendicular to the to the weld plate and as far as the plate thickness is quite thin then there is no significant out of plane or offset from the uh, weld plane perpendicular to this plane that we can see as a result the bending moment might not be very significant we call it as planar actions so we have force in x and y direction and uh, for the weld it's very straightforward we can have the centroid easily from the top 75 millimeter from sides it will be 50 millimeter now we need to transfer all the loads to the centroid of the weld which is here indeed we have 20 kilonewton in y direction obviously we have 5 kilonewton in x direction and also we have torsion coming from fy times eccentricity in x direction plus fx times eccentricity in y direction here we can see that both of them are in the situation that they can make the torsion or twist the well in the same direction so torsion will be 20 kilonewton times 130 millimeter the summation of 80 plus 50 plus 5 kilonewton times 75 millimeter 6.6 kilonewton meter now the first step is done or the second the first step is calculating or spotting the centroid of the belt we did it it was easy then transfer all the loads to the centroid of the belt step number two now step number three is calculation of the required properties of the belt as far as we have shear forces in x and y direction we need to calculate area of the belt so weld area will be 2 times 100 millimeter times t 200 t a square millimeter and also we need to calculate polar moment of inertia polar moment of inertia is calculated by summation of i x plus i y second moment of inertia about x and y as a result we need to calculate all of those stuff i x will be two times moment of inertia about x in centroid of the segment is zero plus the area of the segment 100 times t times the vertical distance 75 millimeter power by two two times 175 power by two 11 times t millimeter power by four i y two times e times 100 power by three 
divided by 2. 1.67 10 power by 5t. Ip will be Ix plus Iy, which is 1.1210 power by 60 millimeter power by 4. Now we have uh, moment of inertia about x, y, and also polar moment of inertia and area of the belt. The next step is calculation of stresses. We have Fx, which is 5 kN. It makes shear stress in x direction. Tau x will be Fx divided by Aw, 5000 N divided by 200T square millimeter. 25 divided by t megapascal. Now Fy, it's 20 kN downward. Tau Y will be Fy divided by Aw, which is 20,000 newton divided by 200 t, and then it will be 100 divided by t megapascal, and it's downward. So the idea is that we divide the force by the entire length or area of the belt. We assume that the stress is distributed constantly when it is in tension or shear forces or compression. This might not be 100% correct, but it has enough accuracy for belt calculation. So if I want to sketch the belt situation, and the shear stresses that we calculate, it means that if these are the both welds we considered, we assume that the shear stress in x direction is 25 divided by t, and it's completely constant in the entire length of this weld. The same goes for the bottom weld. This is 25 divided by t, 25 divided by t. In, in y direction, we assume that the shear stress is constant in the entire length of the weld. So here, we assume that this is 100 over t as a constant stress. Now we are done with the shear forces. It's time to go through the torsion. For torsion calculation, we went through the equations. Tau x will be Ty divided by Ip, and in x direction, Tx divided by Ip. Y and x are the coordinate towards the centroid of the weld, and they can be different spots that you are interested to calculate. T and Ip are constant values. So here, T is 6.6 .6 kN meter and IP is 1.12 10 power by 6 T millimeter power by 4. If I substitute these two values to T X to tau X and tau Y, you can always write a indicator to show that what this tau X is relevant to torsion. So it will be 6.6, .6, 10 power by 6, 1.12, 10 power by 6. It will be 5.9 divided by t times y, 5.9 divided by t times x. So it depends on, in your calculation, what point you are interested to calculate. Let's sketch the welds. Again, and this time, instead of shear stresses due to the shear forces, we are going to sketch the shear stresses due to uh, torsion. Torsion is in clockwise direction. And now let's just pick some points. One point here, one point here, one point here. If you want to sketch the Shear stress due to torsion, it's easier if you connect the point of interest to the centroid of the weld and then 
put the shear stress perpendicular to this radial length in a way that it is making the same direction torsion as T. For example, here, tau will be this way. In the next point, in the other points, for example, if I point number one, and let's go through number three and number five. So in number one, X is 50 millimeter and y is 75 millimeter in number three x is zero and y is 75 millimeter if you sketch by the arrows then you don't need to consider the positive or negative or the sign you just need to graphically check what direction your shear stress would be and at point tau also, uh, at point five, it's 50 millimeter and 75 millimeter. Now we can uh, sketch for each points, the component in X and Y direction. For example, at point one, this is tau X, this is tau Y. If I uh, sketch the components for point three it's completely the same direction because it doesn't have component in y direction here we can see that x is zero and if we put it towards the equations here we can see that tau y is zero and at point number five this is tau x and this is tau y and you can do it for other points now let's check out what would be the most critical point in this arrangement. If you look at point number one, the shear stress due to torsion is exactly in the same direction as shear stress due to shear force. 2mt5 over t and also tau x here in point one. And if you look at again point number one, the shear stress due to tor torsion is exactly in the same direction as the shear stress due to the shear force as written 100 over t but for example if you go to point number two and if i sketch the components of this we can see that in y direction this component is exactly in the same direction as this component but in x direction, the component is balancing the other shear stress. So it means that point number two is not the critical point. If we go to point number three, we can see that both components are in the opposite directions of the other two components. One due to torsion, the other one due to shear forces. This is for point number four. Point number five, in shear and in torsion, tau x are in the same direction, but in y direction, they are in opposite directions. As a result, in our calculation, for this example, point number one will be the critical point. As a result, if we go with point number one, tau x will be 5.9 times 75 millimeter divided by t so it will be 5.9 times 75 and then it's 442.5 divided by t megapascal and tau due to y will be 5.9 times 50 millimeter divided by t 290 5 over t megapascal this direction and this direction now as far as we have the critical point we can easily calculate what would be the overall tau in x and y direction so tau x will be tau x due to force plus tau x due to the torsion so it means that 25 
plus 442.5 divided by t. 467.5 over t megapascal. And tau in y direction, again, it will be because of the force plus tau because of the torsion. So it will be 100 plus 295 divided by t, 395 divided by t megapascal. That's the end of this video. In the last three videos, we reviewed how to transfer the loads from one part to, this, to the centroid of the weld. In the other video, we went through the weld properties calculation for moment of inertia about x, y, and polar moment of inertia, including the centroid of the weld. In this video, we went through the stress calculation. These three videos are not for weld calculation. They are coming from a static and a strength of material. They are not uh, uh, covering anything from the weld. They are just basic stuff for calculation of stresses. But it is good to know and uh, go through it a little bit specifically for, for weld calculation. For example, just assume that it's a line, not an area, and, and then just uh, what we cover. Now it's time to start, for example, one method, directional method, and we are ready for that. In the next video, I will go through the Eurocode 1993-18 for calculation of the belt according to directional method. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.